So I'm going to do a two-part demo of how to add dynamic functions to a block to make them more useful. I'm going to show you the end product and then I'm going to take you through the steps to create it. So I've got a door block and what I've added to the door block is I've added the ability to scale the door to different preset sizes. So right now it's set at three foot. I can also make it a two foot ten door. I can make it a two foot eight door and you can see the leaf and the swing are adjusting. You know, I can make it a bigger door, three foot six, three foot four. Um, so I've added some presets to that. So the second action that I've added to the door block is the ability to flip it. So I can flip it in both directions, both horizontally and vertically. So I can flip it this way. I can also flip it this way. And I also am maintaining the ability to scale the door. So I, like I said, I'm going to take you through the steps to do that. This first demo is going to show you how to create the scalability um, of the door. And then the second video will show you how to add the flip to it. So as you're adding dynamic functions to a block, it's really important to kind of go one step at a time and keep testing it. Because especially as you add multiple dynamic functions to the block, it tends to affect the previous ones you've already added. So you have to make adjustments as you go along to make sure that it behaves in the way that you want it to. So the very first thing I need to do is I just need to create a plain old block of a door. So I have the geometry of a door over here. I've got a p-line for my leaf. I've got an arc for my door swing. And I just made a three-foot door. And I'm going to create a regular block. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to just call this demo door. I'm going to pick my base point, which is going to be the corner of the leaf. And then I'm going to select my objects. And then just click OK. So now I have just a regular old door block. I'm going to open this in block editor and then I can add the dynamic functions to it. So I'm going to double click on the door, click OK, and now I'm in the block editor. And I want to look at these block authoring palettes. There's a series of um, different items on the different tabs. So you've got parameters, you've got actions, you've got parameter sets and constraints. Parameter sets are kind of nice because they build in a parameter with an action. So you don't have to put that parameter in and then add the action. So this is where we're going to start. I'm going to start with a linear stretch. So it adds a linear parameter and tells it that I want to stretch um, on one side. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to add my start point, which is going to be the space point, the corner of my door. And it's asking for the end point, and I'm going to come over here and select the end of my door swing. And I'm just going to pull the label down a little bit, and you can see it adds this grip here. Now the other thing it adds is this stretch action. And the next thing we need to do is we need to define what that stretch is going to be. So I'm going to um, right click on that and open up this action selection set. And what I want to do is I want a new selection set. So it's asking me to add my stretch frame. So it's, it's like if you were in the stretch command and you have to do the crossing window to show what you want to stretch. So what I want to stretch is the end of my door. Um, we're going to stretch the door leaf and then we're going to have to do a scale on the door swing arc because the stretch doesn't work on the arc. It gets deformed. You have to use a scale. So we're going to start by stretching the door leaf. So I'm going to do my crossing window here. And then it's asking me to select objects. I only want to select the door leaf. So then I'm going to hit enter. So now let's take a, a look at how our action is working. I'm going to go to test block over here, which opens a new tab and allows me to test the action. So if I pull the grip over here, and eh, that's not really what I want it to do, right? Because it's, it's pulling the door side to side instead of we want it to go up and down. So let's go back out of our test window and back into our block editor. What we want to do then is we want to select our stretch action and go into properties. And we're going to look for this angle offset. Right now it's set to 0 and I want to set it to 90. So now let's go back into our test block and see how that works. Okay, so now it's moving the door in the direction I want to based on this grip point over here. So let's go back out of our test block window and I periodically like to save my block as I'm going along too, just in case. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a scale 
function to the arc. Um, and we're going to add it to the same parameter. So what we need to do is we need to look on actions because we've already got a parameter set. So we're going to go to actions now and select scale. Now the next thing it's asking me to do is select a parameter. Well I want to select my same linear parameter and it's asking me to select objects. So I'm going to select my arc and then hit enter. So now you can see it's added another action here. So again let's go into our test block and see how it works. Let's pull this. Okay that's looking pretty good. So now we've got the basic functions of scaling our door. Now what we want to do is add in those preset um, uh, increments basically so that we can scale it exactly to a size. You know this is kind of nice we can scale it but we want to be able to set it to precisely standard door sizes. So I'm going to close this test window again and this time I want to select my parameter and go into properties again and then what I want to look for here are the um, let's see the value set. So right now the distance type is set to none so it just lets me pull it whichever way I want to go. I want to set that to list. And right now the list that's preset in there is three foot because that's what I made the door. So what I want to do is come over here and select this button and I can add distances. So I'm going to add two foot eight, two foot ten, three foot two, three foot four, and three foot six. You can add whatever you, know, whatever you think you might use and you can always come back and add um, different ones later down the road if you find you're on a project that needs different sizes. So now I'm going to click OK. And now you can see I'm getting these little vertical lines that indicate those different increments. So again, let me test my block. And when I select this grip, it's going to lock in at these different um, sizes. And you can see they're, they're being listed there in that, that white box. So if I want it to be 2 foot 8, I just kind of pull it over there and it scales automatically to 2 foot 8. So now what I want to make sure that I do is um, go out of my test window, go back to my block editor here, and I want to save my block and then I can close my block editor. So now I've got a door block that will scale to different sizes. Okay, so that's pretty cool. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the flip function and I'm going to stop this demo here and then go to the next one just so the demos don't get quite so long. So if you want to figure out how to do the flip one, listen to the next one.